everybody, Backyard Bullion here. Should you buy bars or coins of silver and gold, and what is right for you as a stacker and investor of precious metals? Those are questions which I know that I've asked myself an awful lot over this last couple of years of buying precious metals, and I continue to look at and evolve my way of thinking around this subject as I go forward with my stacking strategies. So today's video aims to give an overview of some of the pros and cons that I've observed that are right for me in my situation of that question of bars versus coins. There is no simple one-shot answer to this. Everybody's situations are going to be different, so that's really important to bear in mind. Also, I'm not giving financial advice. It's just a collection of my own thoughts and opinions that are relevant to me in my situation. So please understand that if you take any financial decisions from watching this video, they are yours and yours alone. Now, I thought it was a really apt topic to talk about today as I've just received from the Germania Mint this absolutely stunning latest edition in their Germania series. Thank you very much to the Germania Mint for sending this through to us. They are, as you saw from the intro, sponsoring today's video, and I really appreciate their support. So a big thank you to them. There's a link down in the description to their website where you can find out a lot more information about this. We will do a little bit of a summary on the particulars of this round at the end of today's video, so stick around if you want to see that. But it's a really cool piece, but very apt to have received it today, as whilst this looks like a coin, it's coin-shaped, it's very, very coin esque in its design, and it's even got denomination on the other side. It's not actually a coin. And you might be asking yourself, well, what difference does that make? Well, the actual denomination of a coin, the actual designation of something as a coin, is really very important to a lot of factors in the European Union, certainly, and around the world as well, with regards taxes and its status as a coin, really does affect that here in the EU. For example, in the EU, we have to pay VAT on this. There is no way around it. Even from sellers in the European Union that might have margin schemes, they have to put higher premiums on them. So they do have a bit of an influence in that regard. Also, this kind of item here that you buy, it's not a coin, it's just a round piece of silver, versus something like this Britannia, this Oriental Border Britannia, this carries capital gains tax exemption. So there definitely are factors to consider if you are looking at coins versus bars. And I put rounds like this in the same category as bars. Whilst these are potentially a little bit more collectible in terms of premium, and that's an item which we will cover in this video, it's still not a coin. It's not in that sort of same designation category. It doesn't have the capital gains tax exemption statuses. A really interesting thing in the United Kingdom about selling silver is hallmarking legislation. Now, you might think, how does that actually come into play with this? Well, the hallmarking legislation says you are not allowed to sell an item and describe it as silver or gold or platinum or precious metals unless it is hallmarked or an exempt item. And an exempt item would be a coin, any coin that has a legal denomination as a coin. Now, this doesn't. And there are other items out there in this world that don't. The lawless round here that I've got, very, very pretty indeed. It's made of silver, but doesn't have a hallmark doesn't have any guarantee other than just someone putting 999 silver on it. Same here. Even though this comes with a certificate of, of authenticity and, you know, you think, oh yeah, okay, it's definitely 999 silver. There's still a question in my mind and one which I haven't really researched and found the actual legal answer to as to whether this is something that you can actually legally sell and describe as silver in the United Kingdom against the hallmarking legislations. It's really, really very interesting indeed and definitely something to think about uh, going forwards. That hallmarking legislation, by the way, is one of the key things for big bars of silver and how whether or not something is actually you know, protected and guaranteed as its purity. So the reason I have this big bar of silver out here as well is uh, you know, I'd love to have something this size in gold. Gosh, wouldn't that be something to behold? So that's where I'm gonna go with my next to, a sort of point on this topic is the size side of things. Obviously, if you're going to go down the bar route, there are potentially lots of different sizes to do. You can go big, you can go small. One of the pluses of having bigger bars is the lower premiums on those. You pay a less of a premium over spot. For those who are new to this world, premium means how much you pay over the raw metal price of it. And of course, if you're buying something like the hand-poured silver bars, which I made like this one, they will have a premium on them. So you are very much putting yourself into that category of the large premium. However, big bars have other problems. And 
that's definitely something to factor in. It's something I've factored in a lot as well, because, you know, we want to have, you know, a fairly decent sized gold stack by the time we get to our retirement age. And the idea of front loading, having a big lump of gold right now is quite appealing. But having a big gold bar in a size like this is very, very constricting in terms of liquidity. You have one giant great big piece, which, you know, if you're buying a kilo of gold up front, that's going to be 34, 35,000 pounds worth of gold just sitting there. And if you want to sell it, you have to sell it all in one go. So if you are going to go down the bar route rather than the coin route, and, and again, the same question of, of coin versus bar comes in there at the start, uh, you know, a big bar of gold is not going to be capital gains tax exempt and certainly the potential to earn a good profit on a large bar of gold if things were to catapult and go very high in terms of gold price you know that's definitely something to think to think about now of course you can go down the smaller route like this credit suisse five gram gold bar definitely however gold bars are very frequently and often counterfeited and i'm reading a lot it's very interesting i've read a lot of uh, research on different dealers websites out there and one of the things that they say with coins one of the negatives that they put on this coins versus bars argument is that coins don't come with certificates of authenticity in my opinion the coin itself is its own certificate of authenticity because a big giant bar of gold just let's imagine this is a big giant bar of gold it would have probably 999 plus gold written on it stamped on it might even well have a certificate of authenticity Sta oh, I was going to staple to the bottom, stuck to the bottom of it, like you see with a lot of these bars. But that means nothing. That means nothing at all. A coin is standardised. You know if a coin is a genuine coin by its width, its dimensions, its density, and everything. And you can measure those very accurately. They are standardised for a reason. That is really, really key. Gold bars, not so much. Certainly hand-poured silver and hand-poured gold bars will vary from bar to bar. And the potential for counterfeiting is a lot higher with gold and silver bars, certainly at the larger sizes. Now I've got an item here, which I will be featuring on another video at another time. And this is something incredibly special. This is an incredibly heavy and dense bar of, oh, say bar, cube of tungsten. Now to put this in perspective, this, this silver bar here over here is just over a kilo. This, as you can see, the comparable size weighs 2.4 kilos. It is absolutely incredibly dense. And tungsten is one of the items, one of the materials that is used very commonly to plug large gold bars. So counterfeiting is definitely something to factor in. We'll talk more about this tungsten cube at a later time, but definitely something to factor in, in that, uh, you know, the world of big gold bars and even small gold bars. There are a lot of fakes out there. I've seen gold bars in assay cards, you know, down to even smaller sizes of, uh, you know, a couple of grams being faked. And, you know, people think that the certificate of authenticity that goes with it is that guarantee, but it's not. And, and it's really interesting to kind of think about that uh, and definitely factor in that. Now, coins. I said there that the standardization of coins is really, really important and key. And that for me is probably the single biggest factor that influences my way of thinking. Coins are collectible, they're world recognized, they are items which are desirable and have been desirable for centuries. Now I'm not going to argue that silver bars, gold bars have been around for thousands of years as well and often used as currencies, you know, large giant ingots. In fact, those are the commonplace when you get to the larger scale of governments and uh, countries. They will, of course, have the larger items of gold and silver in bar form. It's just much more convenient to store, which I guess is something to think about as well. But for me as an individual stacker, I'm not a country. I don't have the wealth of a country. Having the denominations of silver ticks the collector's box for me. I can have different variations of these items. They are standardized. They are well recognized. They are collectible. They've been around for thousands of years in coin form, and you can then verify as I said, whether or not something is real or genuine or not. This is a prime example. This is a 1,300 plus year old coin and it is absolutely stunning. Love it. Very, very generous gift from a customer. Uh, and I'm just so over the moon with this. Love it. But it is very interesting. You know, 1,300 years old. It's standardized. People knew what it was when I sent it off for grading to get it authenticated. It's very easy to do so a large bar of silver or gold, you might not know its origins, you might not know its history. One of the pluses of having hallmarking is that forever this bar will be known as a backyard bullion bar and it will be seen as one, which is fantastic. 
but big old chunky bars of gold and silver that are mass produced by certain companies, you know, 50, 60 years ago. I've seen loads of little bars, 10 ounce, 20 ounce, 50 ounce bars uh, come up for sale every now and again, and nobody knows their origins because the company that made them has gone, has gone bust. And uh, it's kind of sad in a way, but with coins, you kind of have that history there. You know what they're all about. You know uh, their denominations, their sizes, their standardizations, and that really is very important. Now, one of the last bits to talk about is going to be around budgets. Now, a lot of people view uh, the fact that large denomination uh, items like big bars of silver and gold are unachievable for people. And yes, there is a certain degree of that. Uh, however, I would argue that if having a large bar of silver is right for you, then maybe saving up for one is the right course of action rather than having to spend money every month. But then there are pluses of saving a little bit of cash every month with the different pieces that you buy. So there's definitely ways to factor in of how you want to go about your stacking strategies. In terms of the most important part of that in terms of budgets is going to be the selling at the other end. If you are on tighter budgets than most people, then having a clear and accessible exit strategy is key to releasing the equity of what you've got. So having big bars of silver and gold might be all well and good in reducing premiums of purchasing at the other end, and it might be right for you, but finding a seller or finding a buyer to sell it to at that other end is going to be a lot harder than selling little coins. Certainly if it's in the gold form, you know, a one kilo gold bar would be very difficult to sell, and it would also not potentially have a premium attached to it. Now, premium is, I think, the last point which I want to finish on in today's video. So premiums are probably one of the things that factors into my mind an awful lot. Yes, you can buy big bars of silver and gold or even small bars of silver and gold. This Credit Suisse five gram gold bar, which I absolutely love, is fantastic. It's really nice to actually have just a five gram gold bar, but it's never going to hold a very big premium. It might have a little premium. Credit Suisse might become really desirable. You know, PAMP bars, PAMP gold bars are very popular and they hold premiums, but ultimately, Bars like this just have a spot price value or ever so slightly above spot price value depending on where and how you sell it. And that's one of the reasons why I'm quite happy to just hold it with my bare hands and feel it. And you know, if it dings against my ring, I'm not too bothered about it. That is what it is. However, with coins, there are potential for good premiums. What, nearly threw that one away good premiums to earn from these, and they won't be earned necessarily from coin, uh, from bars. So coins, you might pay a little bit more of a premium at the start, but at the end of the process, that premium may have grown as a percentage, which I find fascinating, and it's a market which is not for the faint of heart, definitely, it does have its ups and downs, but every now and again, you get items which really do sing and yield really high premiums. Now, in terms of this Germania, let's finish up by having a quick overview and look at this. I want to say a big thank you again to the Germania Mint for sponsoring today's video and for sending us through this absolutely stunning round. It's not a coin, it's a round. I might well say coin as I finish up today's video, but it's a round. It's absolutely glorious, and this is, in my opinion, one of the best Germanias that they've produced to date. I love the eagle, I love the way it looks and the way it's flying and landing there on Germania's arms. Looks stunning in her design and detail as well. The background with the swirly patterns is fantastic. Really very attractive round indeed. On the reverse, the traditional uh, kind of Germanic look and, and feel of the double-headed eagle there with the arrows and the laurel, le laurel leaves, I think that, or yeah, wreaths, leaves, I think it's leaves, uh, is there with, of course, Germania 5 Mark. Really, really stunning piece, and I'm very happy with it. I think this side is always somewhat outshining the other side of the design somewhat, but really very cool indeed, and I'm very happy to have had this from the Germania Mint. So again, a big thank you to them for sponsoring today's video. All the information about this is down in the, uh, well, there's a link to the Germania website down in the description below. This particular one ounce round has a mintage of uh, 25,000, but there are different size nominations, and I believe that this Germania 2020 is going to be having a one kilo silver version, which would be pretty fantastic to see, uh, and uh, that will have a mention, I think, of 100 I'm reading online, so really interesting to see that they're now expanding into the kilo size area. Now, I personally would say that that's going to be a pretty hefty premium piece of silver, which is not a coin. Uh, so again, all of our questions here about coins versus bars will raise its ugly head, I suppose, in buyers' minds for that. Uh, whether or not it's right for an individual, who knows? For me, going forwards, my stacking strategies will very much depend on 
I guess what is right in terms of my what I want to achieve with the silver. So I want to achieve with the silver is to buy more of this stuff. The silver that I buy as an investment ultimately will be sold, hopefully for a profit, a premium to then buy the gold. So ultimately cheap bullion price gold is more appealable to me than uh, bullion price silver. I do still buy uh, you know, premium pieces of gold in terms of proof coins and things like that, but ultimately the long-term strategy is to flip some silver and make it into gold and so do some alchemy basically. So I'd love to know your thoughts and opinions on bars versus gold, uh, bars versus gold, bars versus coins in silver and gold. What is right for you is very different to what is right for other people, I am sure. So I'd love to know your thoughts and opinions. If you enjoyed today's video, please do take a moment to hit the thumbs up button down below. And if you'd like to see videos from us in the future, then make sure you hit that subscribe button as well. Otherwise, that's it. Big thank you once again to Germania Mint for sponsoring today's video. Otherwise, have a fantastic week and thanks for watching. Please make sure that you like, share, comment and subscribe for more.